Welcome, dear students. This is Dr. Usama Kashwan. We are going to talk about the um, uh, change management. And still, we are working on change management. And I want you to listen to, uh, to, to be with me here to, um, to get the benefit from what we're talking about. Let me share the screen first. Here we go. And let's talk about the change management and some aspects in the change management as well. Uh, what we want to know about the change is uh, what is the organization change management? Why it is important and the human factor in change and organization goals and objectives from the change and the five pillars of the successful change and the alt utilize the uh, change tools and templates, how to get use of them. First of all, organizational change management, and we had the discussion of it before, and we had the, the identification. Organizational change management is an approach to transitioning an organization, including its people, from their current state to a new state. So you are moving from a situation now to a new situation. This is what we mean by change. This change may be change in process, change in the procedures, change in the techniques used in the management, change in the, in the uh, structure itself of the company, the change in the organization levels, instead of using tall structures, we'll use flat structures. All those are types of change. So the change, to get ready for change, people, you must qualify the people for the change like paving the way for them to accept the change. The process must be well uh, for change or able to change. The culture of the people itself must be willing to accept the change. If the culture of the people is not willing to accept the change, then in vain the change, you won't be able to do change. And the strategy of the company itself, do they help uh, the company? Strategy is to encourage the change and work for it and work for it with enthusiasm, like we said before, or not. Okay, now for the organization change management, why it is important. Organization can drive better performance, of course, and amp up business results through effective change management. Leading in change is very important as well. We have the five organizational challenges, things that's very important, and the problems in the change itself, because it, there are some uh, obstacles will face us when we come to change, like resistance from the people, the resistance for change, navigating the political landscape, addressing team dysfunctions, because some teams are having some problems. Um, like we talk about them now, the disadvantages of the teams, sometimes some people of them, some of them will even reje reject the change or they will not accept the change easily or they will try to impulse their own ideas above the other people of the team members. They will try to be prevail and dominate uh, the others. Difficult conversation as well, and dealing with ambiguity. So how we will deal with things which is not clear or uncertain, or we are not quite sure of it, how we will deal with it. Uh, we'll move to another point, which is the pillars or the main basic points or the main aspects of the successful, successful change. So if we want a successful change, we must have a good communication system. We must have a sponsorship. Who is the leader or the responsible for the change or the leader of the change? We must have a good stakeholders management. And we said before, the stakeholders means all the parties that have a relationship either direct or indirect in dealing with you uh, as an organization. As example, the suppliers, the consumers are stakeholders, suppliers are stakeholders. Uh, you're, you're, the people who are, who are dealing with you, organization entities, the owners of the shares are stakeholders. Uh, so sometimes the board of directors, if they are the owners, are stakeholders as well. The readiness, are you ready for the change? This is another point with the main things. If you are ready and prepare the people and prepare the process, like we said before, things that must be well ready for the change, then you will accept the change and the change will be effective. And training and turnover, those are also other points. Notice the communication also is very important. The sponsorship, 
and they goes like a circle here in front of you. And the meaning of a circle that they are bind to each other. They are correlated to each other. You cannot, it's like a chain. You cannot separate communication from the sponsorship, from stakeholders, from the readiness, from training. All of them are working together. All of them are work. You cannot work on one of them in isolation of the others. As example, you cannot uh, perform a good communication and say, I'm, I'm good now for change and ignore the sponsorship and the stakeholders and readiness and training. You cannot do this. You have to work in all these five files in the same time for successful change. Uh, the culture, culture of the organization, the organizational culture must be very well and bathed, ready and accepting any change. Culture generally refers to the shared sets of values. When we talk about the culture, we are talking about the values, the norms, uh, the habits of the people and the assumptions, the beliefs, the attitudes, everything regarding it is including the uniform, it's including the, uh, the types of eating, the music, everything goes in the religion. All this goes within the culture itself. So all this must be ready for the change and accepting the change as well, as well. accepting the change. If there is resistance uh, towards change, we have to work on this file. We have to work on it and try to make the people accept the change and that the change at the end will be for their favor or for, and for their benefits. Uh, okay. What makes up organization's culture profile? In other words, what makes an organization successful? Efficiency, quality, innovation, customer services, those are the things which any change aim to, or the goal is to do those things. To be more efficient, to have higher quality, to be innovative, to be um, satisfying the customers, representing the customer services, and to change the company's image, that the company's reputation will be higher and the people will love the company. So any kind of change here is the core reasons for change are those things. Efficiency, quality are why we are doing the change. We are doing the change because of this, because of the efficiency, quality, innovation, customer services and company's image. Those are the reasons for the efficiency. Okay, what about the human side of change? The people, how to make the, the people accept the change? By creating awareness, you define the problem and create a common understanding. Understanding creates a desire to fix the problem. Ownerships drive the knowledge to find the solution. Owning solution leads to acceptance, so awareness then leads to desire, and the desire leads, leads to knowledge, and the knowledge leads to acceptance, okay? So all this will be uh, affect or influence the change itself. So those points are necessary to have a change. Then reinforce through awareness and training when even after the project has ended. So because we said before, we said that the, the change after you, 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 you do it in your organization, you need this change to be a permanent. It will become a part of the culture of the company that to accept the change. It's not only a one work uh, at a time or one work, then it's, you will do the, ch the change only once. The change is a continuous process. It's always doing, you are always doing the change. You are always doing the change. So you have to keep it on this. Uh, the stages of the change, we had it actually eight stages before, so I don't want you to be confused with this, it should, but if you really want to shortcut here, we can say plan and, plan and analyze the change, design the change, build and test, and deploy and transition of the change. Uh, I believe it's the eight um, uh, steps of the change itself, and that's why we do the change. Okay. Here are the, um, I guess we came to the end, but again, I'm, I'm just stressing on the five uh, pillars of the change or the five necessities for the change, the good communication, the sponsorship, 
the stakeholders management, the readiness, and a good training for change. This will help. Uh, for the communication, like we talked before in the previous videos, uh, the, the way the information is moved or uh, transformed from the sender to the receiver and how he would understand it and how the code of understanding it, it should be understood at the same way the sender send it. Uh, so something in the communication for the good change, like here, communication strategy and plan must be clear. Establish audience group, tailor your message. Like we talked before, not everything in one message, like slides or segments for the change it goes apart by part, not all of a sudden. And use multiple delivery channels and be visible always. And we talk about this in a previous video about types of change and the communication. We have direct communication and we have indirect communication and the difference between them. Uh, for the training, establish comprehensive training plan, train your leaders and change agents. Training need assessment first. You have to know because how you know the skills, the level of skills for employees, you have to assess them first. Identify rules and skills building requirements, transition plan, then reinforce and encourage learning. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me here, and I, uh, I came to the end now, and I wish you a very good night. Thank you so much.